Okay, group one, how are we doing? Um, we will be Great. out of the game in of the demo machines. I'm sorry, say again? Uh, we already opened the game and ready to play. Excellent, no, fantastic. We're, we're ready. Okay, so um, who is going to be speaking? Uh, I'm going to speak. Okay, Sean, you're going to speak. So, Sean, what we're going to do is we're going to hand the video off to you. And then while you start speaking and introducing the other members of your group, um, the rest of everybody can um, get the, the game ready to go on the machines. Okay, I'm going to hand it off to you, Sean. Go for it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, hello, everyone. We're group one. Uh, we try to come up with uh, an official uh, group name, but we fail because we feel like, oh, well, actually, we're, we're, we're thinking about group zero because like everything in computer science starts with zero. Um, so why not we start off by introducing ourselves? Um, Jamie, do you want to start first? Okay, my name is Jamie Song. I'm a fourth year computer science and mathematics double major. In the group, I was responsible for communication between client and server side. And also in right. yeah, that's why I implement some of the game logics. And I'm passing it to Emily. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily, and I'm taking charge of the graphics part by passing the models to the game. Next one. Yep. Hi everyone. Um, oh. My name is Chin Chen, and I was working with Emily on the graphics side. And um, who's going last? Peter, do you wanna? Yeah. Um, my name is Peter, and I'm mainly responsible for uh client server communications. And I also help out with uh, compiling and that kind of issues. And as well as some, a bit of gaming logic. Yep. Hi everyone, I'm Siki. I'm a fourth year uh, CS student. Uh, in this game, in this group, I'm mostly the artist uh, focusing on the uh, models. Okay, my name is Sean. Uh, I'm a, a senior commerce science student, and um, uh, I kind of have a I'm a hand in like everything. So I do a little bit like networking and also graphics, and uh, I also help with debugging. Um, so before we get started, we we'll, we also wanna like acknowledge the help by um, Cara uh, Cora from Group Two and Ivan from Group Two. Thanks for their last minute debugging and also our amazing TA Edward and his former teammate uh, Sterling for helping me out at the last minute. And so just a little bit, a little bit about our games. Our game is like a um, multiplayer battle royale like game. Um, so the reason that we chose this kind of general was because uh, all of our group members uh, play a game called Crazy Arcade when we're kids. And our game is kind of have like the same similar gameplay as this. And so basically, um, uh, so at the very beginning of this game, like four foxes are spawned at different corners of the of the map. And so what they are gonna do is to like eliminate other players by uh, placing bombs. So basically, the bomb the bombs will be uh, having like a, a an area of effect. Uh, by default, the area of effect is one. So whenever like someone plays a bomb, they have to get out the get out the range, like in two seconds. Otherwise, they will be you know be killed by the bombs. And um, but there are some like uh, abilities and some you know buff that they can pick up throughout the game. Uh, so there are like two different types of cubes. There are non-destroyable and uh, destroyable. So the bombs can destroy the destroyable cubes, but not the non-destroyable cubes. And some random tools will be, you know, uh, will be out uh, if the if a non-destroyable cubes, if a destroyable cubes is destroyed by the bomb. 
so the winning condition is to just em em eliminate other players. So you gotta, you know, place bombs, but at the same time, you gotta, you know, just stay out of the range of the bombs. Um, so it's a it's a game ready now. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, why don't we start it? So you can see the, uh, you know, at the beginning, the boxes is the like a bunch of cakes and donuts on the map. And this also see like other players on the map. So all the boxes want to, you know, take over all the donuts. So they want to eliminate other boxes on the map. Um, and here, All right, so, so we can, can see there are like a bunch of gongs and um, elixirs on the map. So the the, the when whenever a player pick up a gong, they can place like multiple uh, bombs at the same time. And so for the elixir, it's gonna increase the, the range of the bomb. So by default, the the error of effect is one, but whenever you have an elixir, it's gonna have a uh, it's going to increment by one. And uh, so you can see here, like we have two foxes trying to like kill each other, but they're also trying to get rid of the, uh, the bomb and also pick up as many items as they can. Wow. So it seems like uh, one player is killed by, by this amazing fox. Uh, so he, uh, this fox is gonna keep going and trying to find other foxes and try to be the last survivor of the game. So we can see here, we also have a shield. The shield is gonna provide you with another life. So by default, everyone has only one life, but with the shield, you can have an extra one to go. Oh. oh. All right, another player is eliminated by the I think we have a winner. Oh, we have a winner? Oh no. Oh that's oh. a that's a quick round. I, I don't oh, think I, I don't think so. And Sim Chen Dad, so Oh really? Oh I wasn't looking at other screens, so I, I don't know like uh how the battles are going on the other part of the map. So why don't we start a a fresh new round so that we can have like a uh more features to explain. Okay, so this time this fog is spawned at the lower right corner of the map. 
and it picks up a elixir so that its palm has additional range. And we can see another fox placing palms at the other side of the map. Sean, really fast, what's the bomb's range? Uh, so by default, the range of the bomb is one. Oh. So it's gonna, it's gonna, wow, that, that's, that's close. It's gonna bomb up, oh, unfortunately our main player kill himself. So by default, the bomb, the range of the bomb is one, but after you having uh, elixirs, it's gonna be increased to two. So, um, so similarly, if you have like as many uh, elixirs as you can, you can increase the uh, range of the bomb to infinity. But that's, that's another story. But our main player is dead. Uh, should we start again? Because yeah, it's okay to start again. Um, I want yeah. to try to like place place several bombs at one time, but that may kill myself. Let's take a try. Yeah, just be careful because after you after you have like a elixir or the gong oh, thing, I didn't die. You are able to place other place many bombs, and the the bomb will be very powerful. So you gotta be careful with that. Otherwise, you'll kill yourself. I think let's start again because the main player is there. Yeah, we can start a fresh new game. All right, so this time the main player is spawn at the lower left corner. And he sees a gong, so he can place two bombs at the same time. And also he picks up a uh, elixir, so the bomb has additional range. Sean, there was a quick question about what the pink guns do. Oh, the gun is just gonna give you another bomb. So basically a player just can uh, can place one bomb at a time, but with the pink gun, you can place two bombs. So with the, with the gun, you can like place two bombs like continually. Yeah, and normally when you place a bomb, it counts as a bomb and you will not be able to place any more. But uh, the more you the more guns you ate, the more bombs you can place simultaneously before it got exploded. And if we go back to the elixir problem, um, originally our dimension for bomb only has one, 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 one in four directions. But once you drink one elixir, then the dimension will increase to two. And the more elixir you drink, the more powerful your bomb will become. The milk jugs? Oh, that's a elixir. So we don't have, we don't really have like a color for the elixir, but yeah. Uh, so we can see the main player still, wow, there are a lot of items around him. Uh, he can choose not to pick up those items because the elixirs are also quite dangerous because as Jamie said, uh, after picking up elixir, the, the range of the bomb will be increased. So you gotta be careful because you might you not know, kill yourself. So we see there are three foxes oh. placing bomb. Oh, that's close. Oh, because I ate a shell, so I have extra life. Yeah. So Emily got a show, so he, uh, so she has a uh, extra life. Sean, another quick question: Is it possible to spawn in a region where you cannot escape without blowing yourself up? Uh, yes, that's that is very not... possible. Well, the the map is uh is fixed for now, but the uh, the items are randomly generated. So yes. I think the yeah, the players will be able to get out the the original place by placing bombs, but um, we have kind of have a random uh, 
like a randomizer for the items. So whenever you, you know, a uh, destroyable cube is, you know, destroyed, you can have like a random thing. And there's a chance that you can't get anything from destroying a cube. All right, we see two boxes. Oh, all right, that was close. So a safe way to not bombing yourself up is standing on the diagonal. Because the bomb has effect right in four directions, but not like in left, upper left, or like upper right. So those diagonals places. Yeah, the bomb can only blow up like one grid horizontally and vertically. So you can, so you just better to stand behind the non-destroyable cubes, which is the cakes. And the donuts are destroyable, so you gotta be careful with that. Sean, another quick question: What's the what's the win condition? Oh, so it's like a battle royale game. So you just gotta kill other players, because all the foxes are quite greedy. They wanna take over all the donuts on the map, and all the cakes on the map. So they just gotta keep fighting and kill other players on the map. And another was, are the bombs solid, or can you walk through them without picking them up? Uh, the, you're not able to walk through the bombs. The items are, are you, you got to pick up an item whenever you walk on those items. Oh, I guess the, the main player kind of woke himself up again, so. Yeah, I think we have a winner. Oh, you got a winner? But that's not the main player. <laughs> that's the oh, really? Ferrari Fox here. What a shame. What a shame on the main player. All right. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what we have for the gameplay. So basically, the four players just going to, you know, place bombs and also stay out of the, out of, out of the range. Uh, trying to be the last survivor of the of the whole map. Um, we we know that the game is not fancy. You know, the we still have a lot of improvements to make. Uh, you know, we we are kind of we don't have like a sound or animation. But uh, yeah, uh, I just want to really thank uh, all of our group mates for making this you know game throughout the whole quarter. It's not it, it was not easy, but yeah, like overall we're we're being a great job, I think. All right, fantastic, you all. That was great. Um, on behalf, I'm gonna clap on behalf of everybody who's who's streaming in. Okay, that's great. And uh, thanks for all of the questions from the audience. Um, keep that up as we go through the other groups. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna transition to group two.